After several bouts of fierce fighting on Tanegashima Island, the Otomo family had taken control, giving themselves rule over a point of particular significance in their own history. At the same time, the warring in Honshu had resumed, with the deployment of terrifying new Nanban weapons heralding the surrender of the Takuoka, the destruction of the Naito, and the imminent defeat of the Hatano. With all these clans silenced, the Otomo domain would now extend to within just days' march of the capital. What do you think happened? Panic. And yet the Hatano themselves were not fools in particular. They knew they would lose in an open battle. Perhaps everyone who knew that was dead already. You heard about what happened before we arrived? Yes, my brother's harem. They're like a message straight from God about what comes of placing your trust in a woman. It wasn't them either, though. God himself, then? Was it a gift? A gift, yes, but from the man who calls himself Shogun, that is all this is. They are scared beyond belief that we have drawn so close, and so they force the Hatano to throw everything into battle no matter the odds. Now, funnily enough, the capital is exposed to attack. Don't even think about it. We have to consult Lord Yoshiaki first. But the chance to attack is now. You think he will be disappointed that we have gifted him the capital and the Emperor? He sent me here because he thinks I cannot live up to the family name. He thinks this because he does not realize I have already surpassed it. I do not consent, my lord. My cannons do. That's enough. If you want father to find out that you did not help him become Shogun, then that is your decision. Hello there, welcome back to Barbarian Masters, episode 24. Right now I'm moving some reinforcements from Inaba up to the front line, and these reinforcements contain our first European troops, plus some mortars which should come in very handy for siege battles. We're starting to prepare ourselves for the upcoming fight with the rest of Japan, as we have been for a few episodes, but now it's quite a lot more imminent than it was before because we've now conquered our way up to the capital. There's also the problem on Tanegashima, that I still had last time, which now I'm going to tactically ignore. I realize what we can try is to put a ship blocking the Tanegashima rebel from getting to the castle to the east, and with that set up, I may be able to just ignore them for the rest of the campaign, or at least for long enough that we can afford to bring Yoshishige and his forces back to the mainland, because once we kick things off with the rest of Japan, we can be naval invaded at any point, so we do need to have our forces somewhat distributed around around our territories. We make it to the next turn without any attacks from the Tanegashima rebels, so I'm going to presume that this strategy is working and continue Yoshishige on his voyage up to the north. He's heading to Aki, the former Mori capital, since that's a nice center from which you can move to various places in western Honshu. Now back to the front line. We're just going to make this assault on the Ashikaga Shogunate and get things going while we have this opportunity. They have no diplomatic ties right now, so attacking them won't bring anyone else into this war, which is perfect. The Shogunate themselves don't have that many troops. Most clans have two armies or more. They only have one, so it's going to be particularly easy to attack them. They also have a full stack in Kyoto, so they don't get to take advantage of Kyoto's very large garrison that normally spawns. So I can bring both armies over to attack, one army isn't enough right now, and we do have to attack immediately because the severe winter will kill our entire army if we leave it outside to take winter attrition since you get plus a thousand percent attrition or something like that. So here we go for this assault. The enemy do have plenty of powerful units on the inside, but we have lots of stuff of our own. And of course, we're bringing our cannons, making siege assaults a lot easier than normal. So I start things off by forming up on the southern side of the capital, ready to attack. Kyoto, as a map, is particularly easy to attack. It has a very flat layout and it's very big, so it's hard to defend. All we need to do to start things off is fire our cannons at various points along the wall to weaken their defenses. We can destroy all of their archery towers right away that's very easy and then we can go to attack their archers as well but first 
the enemy's reinforcements, their one unit, a General's Hatamoto, actually came on right behind where I'd put the cannons, and you can see they're really isolated. I hadn't really deployed around them with the rest of my troops because I just didn't expect them to be threatened in any way there. So now I'm having to do a bit of an emergency maneuver. I leave the cannons behind and have the crew just run away while my samurai quickly screen them. And now this is actually going to turn around and work in our advantage because the Hatamoto, pursuing the artillery crew, run right into these spear samurai. So now they're going to be annihilated by that. And just to seal the deal, we can come in with some Naginatas from the side to make another attack. So that's their reinforcements dealt with effectively and one of the Shogun officers killed as well. That's all well and good. With that done, we can go back to our guns and continue our attack. What we need to do is take advantage of Shogun 2's very glitchy physics. By shooting holes in the wall, it causes these weird springy explosion effects, which actually kill loads of people adjacent to the area that you attacked. So we can use that to weaken the enemy's archers before we come close to the walls. In particular, I need to kill these warrior nuns, very effective archer and melee units. And because they have a small unit size, they are particularly vulnerable to this weird glitchy attack. So we'll just carry on and do as much damage as we can. We've got quite a lot of ammo, so we can just wreck most of the archers deployed against us before we move at all to make sure our assault's nice and easy. Now, a tiny bit later, I switch to another tactic we can use with the cannons. You can see I'm just firing one of the guns, the others are all silent. That's because I'm using manual fire, which just fires one at a time. And manual fire is very useful on cannons because the range of a manually fired shot is much greater than the far at will range of cannons. So that red line there is where they can normally hit. We can't hit this tower in theory, but with manual fire I can drop the odd shot onto it and will eventually destroy it. And we can do that to most of the enemy's towers to make our attack nice and easy. Once we get bored of that, we can finally get things going. Moving forward with guns and archers to start attacking the enemy units around the edge of the castle. Our guns look like they've been waterproof because now they're just loading them in the water. That's good stuff. More ingenuity improving on the Nanban tech. So it's going to take us a while to thin the enemy out and we'll just see how much we can kill before we have to go in for the final assault. <laughs> you fools! They fell right into my trap! Your trap, my lord? Yes, of course, of course! They will find that the walls of this palace are impenetrable to all of their magics, my lord. And our men are the bravest in all the land, unmatched with sword and spear and in courage. Oh, the courage of our men, it brings a tear to my eye. My lord, we've received reports from the walls. They- Quiet! I'm thinking. We need to come up with a suitable way to humiliate the Ottoman commanders. One of their princes is here. Perhaps he shall become a eunuch. Oh, I could rather use another addition to my collection. Maybe some Nanban, too. My lord, we must order our men to fall back to the citadel. We are too few. Too few? What is this crazed babble I hear from your mouth? Are you scared? Ugh! What was that? Their cannons are already in range of the palace, my lord. They, they can hit us here. What? Why didn't anybody tell me? We have to hide. To hide... What stops cannonballs? Why am I the only one not wearing armor? My lord, please calm down. You calm down! You are all traitors! You wish to see me dead. I'll not go down easily! I'll not... I'll not stay to listen to your lies! I'm going! Going? Uh, my lord, but the battle... You win the battle! It will be hard for a strong man like you, will it? And leave me alone! I've business in the cellar. Uh, with the geisha, you understand. I mean, no, it's not... No oh, hell, it is fine! I don't care! Goodbye! Once done with our missile attacks, I had some of Kobukawa's troops burn one of the eastern gates. Ready to make an attack, we'll start shuffling in using our Yari wall to be as safe as possible. Meanwhile, Sugatsura is still finishing off this general's Hatamoto, who seemed willing to just take arrows rather than face the rest of the battle. So now we're inside the castle and the enemy starts to react. Some samurai charge our Yari Ashigaru. The Yari wall isn't perfect because they were stuck on the gatehouses they came in. Pathfinding is worse than usual when you're in Yari wall formation. The battle though is still going to be a victory for us because we have so many archers who can just hit the enemy samurai and kill them. Although they're going to be killing quite a few of our own troops at the same time. Trading the samurai lives for Ashigaru lives is going to be favourable for us so we'll keep firing. There are also more samurai and Ashigaru 
Ishigaru ready to join this attack. Hopefully our archers will help us out with those guys. These samurai routes, we've defeated them. Unfortunately, my troops started forming up facing the wrong direction after that melee. Melees always tend to turn Yari walls around in weird ways. I tried to micro it to get them to face the right way, but realized it's actually probably going to be easier now to just run away. So we broke the Yari wall and started running back outside the castle. We've successfully drawn enemy units towards us. That allows our archers to hit them now, so we can just run away with these troops, bring up a second unit to screen them in case someone tries to pursue them, and then continue using the archers to kill off as many enemies as we can, just use the last of our ammo since there were no viable targets before. We get a few of them as they run away. They don't actually pursue us, but at least we still got some kills on them. And I think that unit in particular just ran to the other side of the map and ended up getting killed by Sugatsura's archers instead. So that all worked out. Meanwhile, Sugatsura's samurai are coming into the castle from the southwestern corner. All the men that were defending it have already been killed, so they can just stroll in. And now they'll just have to finish off a few almost destroyed archer units on the southern wall. Most of those guys will just rout away, and then we'll have that part of the capital secured. Another unit of samurai came to charge our Yari walls as I formed up once again inside the eastern gate. The second and third rank of our Yari wall formation wasn't facing the right direction in that particular case, so it didn't actually work as usual. But I just brought up all the archers to once again rain arrows on these samurai, and I also pushed in a second Yari wall, which successfully moved the enemy back a bit so we could reform and get the proper pike phalanx style formation going. The enemy routed under this attack into my phalanx, so we were just destroyed entirely. Meanwhile, we've got some more Hatamoto guards. We're just charging into our men. I think they're actually routing here and routing in not very good direction. That's going to be the end of them. At this stage, we have secured the outer part of the castle. There's still the inner part, but there's not much defending it. There go those archers, as I mentioned. They just didn't fight as we approached them, so that's probably the right decision in this scenario. Now we just have to work our way through the streets towards the inner part of the fortification. Some samurai appear to stop these samurai as they advance, so now it's going to be a pretty deadly fight just stuck in the street. We can't outflank them or anything, but I do have these Ashigaru in the distance who started running over for a rear attack. That won't be required. The enemy just give up. Their army losses are so large we don't really need to kill many enemies to route units at this stage. I set up some more archers to fire the last of our ammo into the central part of the castle where they did have some Nodaichi samurai standing around, but because we can just kill most of them using our archers now, we're actually not going to have to attack that central part, which is good because that's the hardest bit to attack. It has the highest walls and you have to go over these little bridges to get to it. It's all very narrow and difficult to pathfind through. Just a couple of Ashigaru units now to take out. I'm charging forwards my samurai to intercept them. A nice easy fight now since we're stuck in this little corridor. The enemy will have no chance just facing our superior units. Plus, being only Ashigaru, we can just rout them after a few moments. They routed right into my men, so that's going to be the end of most of them. And with that, it's the end of the battle as well, so we didn't have to attack the center. As I said, that was all very nice, but it's still going to be ours. A decisive victory. Kyoto has fallen for really minimal casualties. We lost about 200 men. We killed about 2,000, which is pretty good for a castle assault. And for Kyoto, that's even better, the most valuable settlement we can take. It's a very good settlement just in general, with good economics and good buildings, loads of slots, and a high-level citadel. But of course, the most important thing is that it allows you to become shogun. If you hold the capital for long enough, the emperor will be forced to name your family as a new shogunate dynasty, and you will now technically rule all of the other clans, and any of them that are still at war with you are now officially rebels. You are the legitimate ruler. The only problem we face right away is that Kyoto actually needs quite a lot of food to sustain itself, being a big city, and we don't have the production to actually feed it. So now we're going to face a famine unless we can rapidly increase production or start moving food around from elsewhere. I suppose this is his way of spiting me. Everyone take a long look at the gift my son has sent. The head, if you do not recognize it, is of the most recent shogun. I forget his name. These scrolls here are from various stewards in Honshu. They all seem to ask for food relief in the aftermath of a large procurement Sugatsura has organized to feed the capital. While almost any man of any experience with such business could have predicted that the local clans would no longer support the capital under our banner, he apparently did not. 
As such, I am forced to ask all of you to raise additional tithes to rebalance the food supply across several key regions. As you do so, remember that the blow my boy has struck will be heard across all Japan, and it is possible that all Japan will retaliate in force. Do not raid your siege provisions. You may soon need them. All we really need to do now is wait and see what happens once we gain the Shogunate, but there was one other concern I wanted to look into, that being the lack of security in the north, because our vassal, the Takuoka, could betray us once that happens, plus the Sakai are up there in Wakasa, and they can actually sneak down through a tiny bit of passable terrain towards the capital from the north. So I'm sending Sugatsura backwards to go and start securing the situation up near Tango, and preparing the capital for attack, building a hospital and a military encampment, two things that increase replenishment rates so he can take losses and quickly come back to fight again. Once Sugatsura reaches his destination a couple of turns later, I've got some presents for him, new troops from Inaba, we've got mortars, a new special unit to play with, and some Portuguese troops to use in our regular battle formations. Now I put a spy in Kyoto, a spy who's leveled up with the spy network's ability which increases the line of sight of settlements. This allows us to have a bit of an early warning system. Now we can see quite far around the capital and we'll see enemy armies approaching towards us and we can already spot that there are basically 20 or so armies just standing around who could attack us once Realm Divine happens. So a bit of a precarious situation that Kobiakawa is currently sitting in. First though we'll focus on the Takuoka. So I'm ready to just declare war on them, I'm just going to straight up attack them to remove the threat entirely, but I noticed here on the diplomacy screen that we actually already have the diplomacy penalty for a realm divide occurring. I think that's because more than four turns have passed after taking the capital, which kind of triggers realm divide, but in this mod it's 12 turns per year, and it's actually waiting a year that causes you to become the shogun. So we're in this weird in-between state at the moment where everyone hates us but we haven't actually triggered this scripted event that will force them to declare war upon us. And it's also worth noting that the Realm Divide actually had very little effect on our reputation overall because it was already so bad with every clan that it actually proportionally didn't do all that much thanks to those strange possibly glitchy effects we're already experiencing. Now onto the attack on the Takuoka, going to be relatively simple, we'll just send our small army to besiege their small army inside their castle, and our big army will go for their big army just outside the castle. Unfortunately, despite being quite close to it, we somehow couldn't reach it, so we can't attack them right now, although that's going to be remedied because they're going to attack me, which was very generous of them, so we still got the battle I was going for here, with all of my stuff fighting against just their main force without their reinforcements, so a nice chance to just eliminate all of their strength in one battle where the advantage should be ours. The fighting starts right away because our cannons and mortars are in range of the enemy's deployment zone, so immediately we'll be able to inflict a few casualties on them and really force the enemy to rush into an attack. Those mortars, very accurate even at long range, but they're actually very unpowerful. Those shots, while looking more powerful than cannon impacts, actually do almost no damage whatsoever. My mortars will probably kill something in the region of four troops with this bombardment. I think it might have got up to six by the end of the battle. They were incredibly ineffective, so we'll have to find another use for these guys. They are meant for castle assaults. You can see here that while their impact is very deadly looking, all of the troops just get back up it doesn't actually do damage to them. I think it's a bit like the fire projecting mangonels but even weaker against infantry. Now anyway the main thing to note about this battle is that the enemy are going to focus on attacking my reinforcements on the flanks of the battlefield. They're splitting their army up completely to do this while only a small group remains in the center floundering under this artillery fire so that's going to make things quite easy for us. Only a few of them will come towards our main formation and it's because so much of my army is hidden they don't realize that we're all up here in front of the artillery so they're not prioritizing going for the artillery and that's going to work to my advantage. Soon enough though some units are going to come over and start climbing up the hill towards us and now we can use another new weapon, our Portuguese troops. They have a very small unit size, only 60 or so men, so they can't actually get that much far onto the enemy, but they're extremely accurate. Their accuracy stat is something like 150 and the bar only goes up to 100, so that's got to be a good thing. 
and they also reload very quickly so over a long time I think they would be very effective but because the enemy are running right at us and they're only going to get a few shots off they're not going to be completely devastating still going to annihilate some samurai units to make this fight a bit easier soon enough a few units do make it to our front line and I'm forced to reveal myself so melee fighting gets going it's mostly just Naginata samurai fighting other Naginata samurai so no particular advantage although we do have lots of veteran troops so hopefully that will help us out and of course we're going to be using our reinforcements who are coming in from those flanking positions to rear attack the enemy. It's going to be very messy because I'm not microing it enough by the looks of things. My cavalry getting stuck as the enemy charge in melee units to protect their archers. I'm trying to get them out while getting my own melee units in there. I'm ending up sending firebomb throwers in. This Yari Ashigaru unit in Yari wall is not doing anything but it is taking a lot of arrows from the enemy's archers further up and they're just being completely annihilated. Very very deadly stuff. Now on the other side of the battlefield, the enemy were chasing around some drafted Ashigaru troops I had out here. I ended up running them to the edge of the battlefield and withdrawing them because they wouldn't do very well in an actual fight, but they just distracted those enemy units and took them out of the battle for a while, and that's just as useful as actually defeating them for all intents and purposes. The confusing looking battle will now just continue. Both sides have the same clan colours so it's pretty hard to tell what's going on in a detailed fashion but you can see from the balance bar we have the advantage. We have enough stuff to get through this enemy army and our firebomb throwers is finally coming in useful as we decimate some enemy on a bushy there. Very effective indeed. The last bit of fighting was from the enemy's general who somehow snuck right around to the back of our enemy ended up attacking Sugutsura. He had more troops than the enemy general at this point though and our Turkish those who had fallen back from the front line can now draw their swords and go in for a fight. They're pretty good in melee as well. So we'll finish off that enemy general and that's going to bring an end to the battle. The result was really good as we can see here. The enemy just completely wiped out. So now from there we could just probably auto resolve and take the castle. However, I was tragically shogun tooed and that's going to be sending me back in time to rethink my strategy. Yes, that is exactly as it would happen. Our victory would be guaranteed. We could surround and destroy their entire force, rendering their castle helpless. Are you ever going to stop playing with your little models, darling? They aren't models. They are tactical markers. I have devised a plan that will allow for a swift victory over the Takuoka. What achievements have you made that leave you able to criticize me? I organized the whole wedding, darling. The... Uh, oh, yes. Needs must. When is it? Uh, darling, please don't feel like I am rushing things along, but it's tomorrow. Tomorrow? We are on the eve of battle! Can't it wait, darling? The enemy are marching upon us! Let's march away then, darling. The venue is in Tambor, after all. Let us invite all the troops to the ceremony. It shall not be a retreat, but merely a display of how little we consider the enemy worthy of attention. Do you not think, darling? <laughs> well, darling, they say the finest victories are ones where you do not engage the enemy at all, so I suppose I will think of something. That's wonderful, darling. We shall enjoy our wedding night after all. Ah, yes, that's lots of important military business to attend to, of course, so... Uh... You're not getting out of this one, darling. I was determined now to not fight with the Takaoka main force after being denied that victory with them and I thought there probably is a way we can actually defeat the Takaoka without fighting their army. We just have to get into a scenario where their army is out of reinforcement range of the castle and out of their territory then we can just take the castle and that will delete the army for free so now I'm going to try and find that situation. They're going to keep attacking me and all I need to do is retreat every time they try. Since everyone's moving around the castle nobody can move very far they're not walking on road so they can't catch up with me and as we saw there they don't actually want to be at war with us at all so now here we are in autumn still trying and we got the moment I was looking for randomly when I attacked the enemy's smaller army it just died for no reason I've never seen that happen before some sort of glitch it must have been so I'm going to take that as an apology from the game for crashing and making me lose that previous battle so now we can gang up on the enemy's main force making them move away because they won't want to fight everything there and we can just take their castle for free now because they're far enough away 
and as I said that will just get rid of the main force because they're no longer in their own territory. They're not allowed to turn into rebels when their final territory falls to someone else. So there we have it, we'll repair the castle, we've got South Tango, and we didn't have to fight that battle in the end. Probably should have done something like that from the very beginning to be fair since it's always possible against one region factions to do something like that and get a nice exploit victory. But anyway, with that done, I'm going to immediately start preparing to move east again because I want to attack the Sakai and take Wakasa. That's a very nice choke point on the front line. Stops the enemy from going towards Kyoto from the north or into any of my territory going westwards there. I've even started trying to convert them to Christianity, but it's not working at the moment because they have a temple and a monk in the region. So they're just counteracting what my missionary is doing, but we'll keep trying just in case. Their monk actually tried to convert my missionary and I'm going to get out of there and use my geisha to take him down. However, in an extremely rare twist, the geisha attack doesn't actually work, so it can fail, at least we've confirmed that. Annoying, because now he'll get another chance to try and convert my monk. Anyway, public order's holding me back, but I'm going to do everything I can to get Sugatsura and as many troops as possible ready to march out to the east next. But something caught my attention before that, something very important. We discovered that I've got these three units near Kyoto and I was just mindlessly consolidating them together thinking I'd recruited them. But no, it's actually some Great Guard cavalry and you get Great Guard when you become the Shogun. Only the Shogunate faction is allowed to have these guys. We also have the Nihon Maru, the special Shogunate ship. So that heavily suggests we have actually been made Shogun. There's just no message or fanfare about it. It just sort of happened in the background, perhaps an effect of the mod. I'm going to give the Nihon Maru to Uno, who happened to be docked nearby with the black ship. So he's now got two very special ships in his fleet and he may need to use them very soon. We get confirmation here at the top of the screen. Our clan has been renamed to the Otomo Shogunate. It has officially happened. And we also get an additional clan trait for having the Shogun, which gives us all sorts of bonuses. So we are now the rulers of Japan. It didn't make a big deal about it and I almost missed it but it has happened and that means the next time we press end turn the actual realm divide will happen. So Things are about to heat up and I'm now frantically looking around, as you can see, seeing if I've got any final preparations I need to make before things get very dangerous indeed. We'll see what happens when I hit that button in the next episode. The rule of the Ashikaga Shogunate was officially over. Otomo forces stormed the capital and passed through the Shogunate's defences like wind through trees, taking the whole city beneath a cloud of gunpowder smoke. It was a bold move, for it provided the perfect excuse for the other clans to begin plotting an anti otomo coalition once again. Every Otomo officer knew what these events were leading to, and prepared accordingly. Kyoto was refortified, the Takaoka were purged and annexed, and countless ships of Nanban and Japanese design were launched into the seas around Kyushu and western Honshu. A single trigger was all that was needed for all-out war to begin anew. When the Emperor suspiciously declared Otomo Yoshiaki as the new legitimate Shogun, that trigger was clearly pulled. That is it for this episode, thank you so much for watching and very very special thanks to the officially Devon patrons. So the war to decide the fate of Japan shall begin in the next episode of Barbarian Masters.